Okay, so I've downloaded Battlegrounds onto my desktop and I've already unzipped it. I'm going to go ahead and rename this folder uh, because I'm going to use this installation of Battlegrounds uh, exclusively for the Island of D2 conversion. And let's open up that folder. And now we're going to bring over the media assets for this game conversion and put them into the Battlegrounds folder. We'll start with the cards. Put all of those in the Objects folder. Then the Days indicator that I made. The Gold indicator that I had from an earlier game conversion. Also this character token that I also had from an earlier game conversion. And finally the wooden table we're going to put into the maps folder. That'll be our background to play the game on. Now normally I would probably throw away the zip file, but you might want to keep it handy uh, to create new installations in case you want to do other game conversions. So let's go ahead and launch Battlegrounds. And when it first opens you see the default background with a grid. I'm going to press the M hotkey to bring up the map selector and select the wooden table graphic that we'll use as our backdrop. And we're given options to resize that graphic, but for now we don't really know how big we want the game table to be, so we'll leave that for later. You can hide the grid, but I'm going to leave it on because it's going to be useful in, uh, in laying things out. And the first thing I'm going to do is bring in a deployment file, load deployment, uh, of a character token that I have from an earlier conversion and it's imported but all the media for it is missing. And let me show you. This is a multi-token object that has all the different characters that you could choose to play. But we need to get the media into this installation of Battlegrounds. So I'm going to select the batch import command for objects and I will select the token artwork. You can see it's all in here. I hit import all and it brings in all the tokens in that folder. 18 tokens have been imported. And now if I select this and I cycle through the various tokens, you can see all the character artwork. I like this one. Now let's go ahead and create our first card deck. Select the create card deck command and navigate to the folder that contains the cards we want to use. In this case the power cards. And I need to tell Battlegrounds which artwork to use as the back of the card for this deck. So we'll select the power card back and it imports all that card media and automatically creates a card deck and shuffles it. So there's our card deck. I select all the cards and flip them over. Now you'll notice you can only see the top card in the deck. That's because they're all stacked directly on top of each other but uh, you can fan them out and see them all if you want. Here, I'm going to zoom out a bit. Uh, notice if I click on, if I roll over a card or select it, you see a magnified view in the top right corner. That is because when Battlegrounds automatically makes a deck, it assigns the portrait of each card to be using the current token. And it automatically anti-aliases the card and assigns it to everyone. Now that's only important in multiplayer games and this is a solitaire game but it's nice to know you can do that. Now I'm going to host a game session. 
the reason being that there's a command that's only available through the chat window and that is for resizing all the cards I like to make them all smaller so I type in a command resize 35 and that resizes all the cards to 35 percent I'm going to flip over the stack and I'm going to repeat the command so that I resize the backs of the cards as well so there's our resized deck now I'm setting the stagger distance for a stack stagger distance basically defines how much it's going to offset the cards when you expand the stack so I'm setting the horizontal stagger distance to 61 which is one grid square I'm going to select the entire deck and fan out the stack and flip them over there you can see the whole deck you can change the stagger distance even while the deck is selected so you can fan them out any way you want any amount you want flip them over restack them and that's all done with hotkeys now let's create another card deck actually it's just going to be one card the front and back I select the back of the card it imports the media for it and this is the rule summary it's like a cheat sheet for the game I'm going to go ahead and resize this to 35 percent as I did the other deck and I'm going to make this a free floating object what that does is I can place it anywhere on the screen that I want and regardless of how I pan or zoom the map window that's going to stay exactly where it is at the same size so that's a handy feature for um, stuff that you want on screen all the time and I resize this to 15 percent to keep it nice and small the reason being that if you ever need to read it you can just hold the mouse over it and see the magnified view in the top right corner so now I've resized both sides of the card so there's our little cheat sheet so let's go ahead and create another card deck this time we'll do the location cards and there you can see a list of all the location cards uh, I need to select the back of the card and when I hit choose it imports all the media and shuffles the newly created card deck now I just need to resize it flip it over and resize the other side and let me pan over a bit so I can fan out the deck there it is if I deselect the deck I can roll over each card and see it magnified so let's reselect the deck flip it over, restack it I will make uh, a deck for the item cards select the back of the card now you'll notice I'm always resizing these things. Uh, the reason for that is uh, any newly placed object including card decks is sized to 50 percent by default 
um, and I want these cards to be smaller on the tabletop, but I made them big on purpose so that the magnified view is a certain size. Uh, I wanted the print size to be legible. So let's uh, arrange your decks a bit, tidy things up. And I've fast forwarded a bit because you get the idea by now. Now we have all our decks in place. Uh, on the right here is the ending card with a you win and you lose side. Let's go ahead and save the encounter or the game file. I'll call this the island of D2. Press save and everything we've done so far is preserved. Now let's place uh, the day indicator. There it is on the table at a 50% size. Hit OK. And because this is going to be a multi-token object, I'm going to add additional tokens to it. Basically, a new token for every day that has elapsed. It's going to be a total of eight days, or eight tokens. And you keep doing this until all eight tokens are attached. Now I'm going to switch back to the finder a bit so I can show you that in the objects folder there's a gold indicator folder and that contains these 16 token graphics. I uh, just wanted to show you where that lives on the operating system level. And now I'm going to do a batch import from the objects folder of the gold indicator. And that's going to bring in all 16 graphics in one easy step. Okay, so the media now resides in Battlegrounds. Now I'm going to go ahead and place an object. Gold indicator 0. I'll go with the default scale of 50%. Now you see how at different zoom levels the uh, the pixels on that graphic can look a bit jagged. If you turn on anti-aliasing it smooths out the pixels so text in particular will look a lot better. Now I'm going to add tokens to this as I did with the day indicator. You have to be careful because it sorts things alphabetically. And I'm going to attach 16 tokens in all. Now that that's done, I'm going to assign a portrait image to each of these. Set it to Use Current Token. And what that does is it's going to show a magnified view in the top right corner. So even if you're zoomed way out so that it's hard to read a token, you can just mouse over it and see it enlarged. And if you select one of these, you can then use hotkeys to cycle through the various tokens until you get to the end, then it starts over again. So for example, to track the gold that I've accumulated, I would just cycle through these tokens. and you can go backwards as well. The third and last video in this series will cover how to turn this collection of game components into an actual game and how to package everything up for distribution.